That worked. So our objectives today are going to be these. Uh, discuss the do's and don'ts of designing for a small van, which are roughly, obviously some don'ts for sure. Uh, help you think about how to plan smarter, not harder, no question about that, and teach you some tricks of the trade. So here's some of the major keys of success, and we're going to break them all down, talk to them, and show you some great examples in the course of the day, too. Packages show that works for your kids and their ability and size. Um, one of my favorite projects of all times, and one I think I was most proud of and the most excited of, was one of the smallest groups I ever worked with, no question in my mind. Uh, it was DCI Division III Corps. Uh, we went into the season knowing we had 20 horns, we had two snares, one tenor drum, five bass drums, five in the front ensemble, eight color guard, and a drum major. That's what we had. We knew they had horrible instruments. We know we had average talent at best, with the exception of maybe one soloist. And we had really bad front ensemble equipment and ugly uniforms to start the season. That's, that's what we knew. That's what we knew. You know, so we kind of, and I think a lot, what a lot of people go wrong with small bands is we really don't look at what we really have and mold the show to fit those kids. You know, so that was one of the things for us that was so important is to talk about, know what, what they could do, what they could play. So when we got into the musical side of it, knew how to arrange the music that would fit the kids' needs best. The thing that, that came into play, after I told you all the bad things, we had, what was that, 20, uh, four, five, six, seven. So we had basically had about 40 kids that were gonna give their heart and soul to be good though. That was a fact that you can't ever underestimate if you design right. These kids would have died for us. You know, and basically they almost did. But uh, they were in a van accident that summer because of the core director, which was not a good thing. Make the show accessible so uh, the crowd responds to the performers. That was important to us. We wanted the kids to make sure it was a show that people could get, that people could enjoy. Because you know, like I know, if the kids hear the crowd enjoying them, it's a better performance. It just is. I mean, rather than doing something they can't relate to or the crowd can't relate to, and that's even worse for a small band than it is a big band. So I think that's really important. The other thing that we knew, we had to be technically sound and be trained and apparent at all times. There, you, a small band does have a huge disadvantage compared to a big band. Every kid is seen all the time. All the time. You cannot hide a bad marcher or a bad flag twirler. You just can't. And as soon as one instrument player drops out, you've now lost 50% of the section in some cases. So we really had to think smart about how to design the show because of that, and I think that's a huge disadvantage. But then again, you could say the huge advantage is I have less kids to train, you know, more one-on-one -on -one time. So I guess there's, you know, there's a trade there. Um, do not over-program, which I still think is a huge problem with the smaller bands. Uh, our, our whole feeling when we did work with the Lancers in particular was we followed the KISS Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. It doesn't have to be huge. Be smart, you know? And then last was, the other important thing with a small band is you gotta make sure you cross all the T's and dot all the I's. We didn't leave any rock unturned, you know, in terms of how we thought about the program. Anything you wanna to add to that before we break it apart? Uh, no, sounds good. Okay, 